In this video, we're going to cover how to use the dimensional viewer with inside Toad workbook. Okay, so I've got an example here. I've got a customer workbook. It's got customer information, order information, and then I've joined those two queries into a third workflow called orders with customers uh, query. Very simple workbook. I haven't done anything, uh, I haven't added any pivot tables or anything to this workbook yet. We're going to focus on this third workflow. Let me name this customers and orders. Let's deal with this third workflow. So I'm in this third workflow. I've joined my customer and my order data together and I want to do some basic analysis of this information. So let me start. Uh, first, one of the ways that I can do a basic analysis, I can do a pivot grid. Um, I can do an output to Excel, um, but I can also do this uh, item called dimensional view. And this is where we're going to focus today. So when I send up a dimensional view, it's going to open up a dimensional view with all of these uh, fields in it. And so what a dimensional view is, it's, if you think about a star schema, if you're familiar with that at all, it's going to seem very logical um, to you. It gives me a field list of all my fields available here. It's got them organized by type. So customer ID is a numeric field, whereas customer name is a, an alpha field. And by dragging these fields onto this work, uh, workspace, like customer name, I can get a distinct list of the values within this field. So here's all of my distinct list of customer names. And then I could do something like, let's look at the order ID here. I can right mouse click on this order ID and I can choose an aggregate type, how I want it to look at this, uh, this field. And I'm going to want to do a, a distinct count. And by dragging this order ID into the same workspace here within the same container, I now have a list or a count of orders by customer. So this is my count of orders by customer. I can rename this column by choosing to rename the column alias and I can go count or let me say count of orders right here. So I've got my customer name and my count of orders. I can choose to reformat this column. I can choose to just right mouse click here and the display format. I don't need the uh, two decimal places. I can just live with one or no decimal place, excuse me, here. And I can sort. This is great. So an easy way to, to sort of create that kind of summary. But what else can I do? Well, the, the workspace here, you can add many containers just like this first one. So let's do orders by date. So I'm going to take this date field and you can see it's already kind of broken it out into its segments. And I'm just going to say by year. So our data only contains 2013. And I'm going to count the number of orders in 2013. I had 131. And you know what? Every time I drop this in here, I don't want to uh, change the format and I don't want to change the column alias. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to make these changes over here. The column uh, name is going to be count of orders. And the column formatting is going to be zero. And so by making the change over here in the field list, I don't need to change it every time I drag it into a box. It's going to remember that. So here's the count of orders. So let's pull another item into this box here. Let's do the count of items. So here I've got my order item number. Let's do the same thing. First of all, let's, let's go ahead and give it a different formatting. And let's give it a column alias and we'll call it count of items. And one last thing, let's make sure we're aggregating this the right way. We want to just uh, a sum. Okay, and we're going to drag this in here. Okay, so I can see with my order date, uh, 2013, I had 131 orders that spanned over 131,472 um, items. And you know what? I think I do need that, change that format here so that I can use a thousand separator, make it easier to read and drop that back in. So now I have two boxes out here. And so let me just give these boxes some labels so I can tell them apart. This is count of orders by customer. And this is count of orders and items by year here. And I can continue to add these uh, containers into this environment. So for example, let's do it by country. So here's my countries, my distinct list of countries. We'll grab my order ID. 
and drop that in here. Count of orders, there they are. And we'll grab my item ID and count that in here. And now I can see that I'm selling mostly to the US. And so I could say count of orders, oops, and items by country. Okay, so I can continue to drag and drop and pull all of these items into my dimensional viewer. So that's a nice way to very quickly summarize my data. And let's arrange my boxes here so I can see them. Um, and we'll go ahead and even make it a little bit easier by splitting this up here and here. And we'll go ahead and unpin this so I get a little more space. Um, this is great. Now, what if I wanted to apply a filter across all of this? I only wanted to look at a specific warehouse ID. Right, so from my warehouse IDs here, from warehouse, let's say 36, how many orders are we fulfilling for what customers, for what countries? Well, that's only supplying the US and it only supplied one order. Um, and it's only uh, this one customer name. What about my other warehouse? Okay, well that was New Zealand. And then I've got a lot of blank data apparently within my warehouse field, great. So what I did there just to kind of recreate that is I looked at this little filter space here and I dragged a global filter into this space and it changed the values in each box that I have, right? But what if I just wanna filter on a single box? Like for example, I wanna look at everything but the US here. I can choose to exclude this piece of data here and it won't impact all of the, whoops, it did impact everything. So I can choose to column filter where country does not equal US. And now you can see that this filter is only applying to this container. So I have the ability to do this as well. There's lots of other features within workbook, including creating uh, some fields, creating roll-ups, creating other calculations within the dimensional view. But what I also wanna show you very quickly within this video is how you can export this item. So I'm gonna go back into my workbook now, and I'm gonna look at this item. Here's my dimensional view, my customers and orders, and I've got this dimensional view. And I'm gonna add a subsequent reporting step here. I'm gonna output this to Excel. And you can see it's a special kind of output to DIM Excel. And so what this means when I go in my settings is that each container that's on my screen here, I can export that into a different sheet and give it a name. So I'm gonna call this sheet, uh, we won't call it count up, we'll just say orders by customer. And we'll call this sheet orders items by year. I'm hitting a, um, a worksheet name that uh, is exceeding too many characters for Excel, so it lets me know. And then I'm gonna go to count of orders and items, same problem here, so we'll just do orders, items by country. Let's see if it accepts that. Okay, so now that I've got this in here, looks good, looks good, looks good, I can go ahead and create this Excel document. And when I do this, I'm gonna go out here and generate this report. And you're gonna see with this one report, I've created a multi-tabbed workbook that creates orders by country, orders by date, and orders by year. Um, with all within this one workbook, just with that one export. So dimensional view is a great way to do summarization without having to do a different pivot table for every summary and having to create a different output for every one of those pivot tables. If you'd like to know more about Dimensional Viewer, the Dimensional Viewer you see in Workbook is the exact same Dimensional Viewer that you see in Toad Data Point traditional format. So go check out our videos on the Dimensional Viewer in Toad Data Point.